Now we are going to start with the DDL statements. In the very beginning of this video tutorial series, in the introduction of SQL, we saw the classification of SQL in which DDL was one of the part. So obviously when I am going to discuss DDL, it is one of the part of your SQL statements and using this type of statement, we can actually change the structure or the metadata of our database. For example, if I want to create a new database object such as table, I can use a create keyword which will be a DDL statement and it will create a new object in the database. So as soon as a new object is created, it is actually affecting the structure of your database. So we will categorize such SQL statements in the DDL. Whatever task you will do in the DDL will be auto committed. That means you will not be able to roll back such statements. So in our next video onwards, we will start working with these statements. But before getting started with that, let's see what all DDL statements we have. Like here you can see create, alter, drop, enable, disable and truncate. So whenever you will create a new database object, that will be a create keyword. We will use a create keyword. So that create statement will actually create a new database object. Initially, we will just begin with the table, but in our coming videos, we will co cover some more database objects and we'll find how can we create the different type of database objects using this command. Once you have created an object, you want to change the structure. For example, you have created one table, you want to add one more field later. So you can do that by using the alter keyword. Drop will be used to delete the definition and the structure of the database object. If I say drop table TBL employees, that means the table along with the structure and data will be dropped permanently. As earlier I said in this video, like these commands are auto committed, you will not be able to do the undo for such things. Now enable and disable, these couple of commands will be used only for a specific database object called triggers which we will cover later. But obviously when you will enable or disable a particular trigger, it will be a DDL statement. You may think like when we are enabling or disabling something, it is not changing the structure because ultimately that particular object like trigger is still in the database. So why it is inside the DDL? So as initially I said, any SQL command which will change the structure or the metadata. So here the metadata will be affected. For example, if you will enable or disable a trigger, so in database that particular trigger will not be in action and your table or which, wherever you are applying that trigger must know that thing. So obviously it will affect the metadata so that the other database objects dependent on that should know that whether this particular trigger is enabled or disabled. And very similarly there is a truncate statement. Truncate statement will basically remove all the records from a table and it will be committed. That means by the time it is removing the data from the table, all the records will be removed and it will not be uh, rolled back. So we will also put that in the DDL. So from our next video onwards, we will start working with this DDL statements.